welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most controversial TV moments. Susan, I'm gay. For this list, we're looking at both scripted scenes from TV shows and unrehearsed or unexpected TV moments that generated controversy. Which TV moment is most controversial to you? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Cultural Stereotypes, Emily in Paris. The titular Emily moves to Paris to work for a French marketing firm. There, she has to navigate her personal and professional relationships in an environment and culture that are new to her. While the show may sound like a delightful dramedy, many have taken exception to some of the stereotyping depicted in the series. Oh, actually, I have to get to my office. Oh, maybe you want to have a drink tonight? I have a boyfriend. In Paris? In Chicago. So you don't have a boyfriend in Paris. Critics have accused the show of portraying French people as lazy, flirtatious, and rude. The character Petra caused controversy in Ukraine as she was depicted as being a petty criminal. Please, go, 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 go. Come back, we can't steal this stuff. We have to go back. Huh? No, now. Retour, vetement. The Ukrainian Minister of Culture went so far as to label it, quote, insulting. Number 19, Primetime Nudity, NYPD Blue. Right from the beginning, NYPD Blue set a different tone for broadcast television with its use of foul language, violence, nudity, and eroticism. Of course, now it's pretty much a given for many series to turn up the raunch factor, especially after the success of shows like Game of Thrones. During this police procedurals run, however, primetime audiences were not used to such things, and many stations didn't run the series when it debuted. The show received a $1.4 million fine for the episode Nude Awakening, which depicted the character Connie McDowell briefly walking around nude before taking a shower. Number 18, Negan Introduction, The Walking Dead. In the season finale, savior leader Negan makes his on-screen debut, as prior to this moment, his name had only been mentioned. Having trapped Rick and his crew, Negan states that he's going to kill one of them in retaliation for the group having killed some saviors. I'm gonna beat the holy hell out of one of you. When he finally picks his target, the camera switches to a point of view shot as Negan begins to attack the unseen character. Many were disappointed with the ending, seeing it as a botched cliffhanger. Things didn't improve with the season 7 premiere, where it's revealed Abraham was killed, followed by Glenn being killed right after. I need you to know me. So, Back to it. Critics felt the brutality of their deaths was gratuitous and distasteful. Number 17, it was all a dream, Dallas. We've all woken up from a bad dream, but thankfully it's never undone a whole season of Dallas. Patrick Duffy, who plays Bobby Ewing, decided to leave the show. To accommodate his request, his character was involved in a car crash and succumbed to his injuries at the end of season eight. Later, Duffy signaled he wanted to return to the show, but his character was killed off. The solution was to have Bobby's death and all of the events from season nine be a bad dream Pam Ewing was having. When I woke up, I thought that you were dead. What? I had a nightmare, a, a terrible nightmare. Audiences were shocked to find the previous season they had just watched was wiped away the instant Pam opened that shower door. Number 16, Tom Cruise jumping on Oprah's couch, The Oprah Winfrey Show. Tom Cruise is one of the biggest movie stars in the world, so it's no surprise he stopped by Oprah to promote his then-upcoming film War of the Worlds. The discussion turned to Cruise's romantic life, as he and Katie Holmes recently began to date, and he was rather enthusiastic about the relationship. He was super giddy and jumped up on the couch. I'm not gonna pretend. <laughs> I can see you're not. Do you know Katie once told Seventeen Magazine? Yes! <laughs> It was shocking because no one had seen Cruz in such a manner before this moment. Still, it was better than when he appeared on the Today Show and got into a heated discussion with Matt Lauer about the use of prescription drugs in relation to mental health. This is a very important issue. I this is a very and you know what? And you're you're here on the Today Show, right? And to talk about it in a way of saying, well, isn't it okay? And being reasonable about it when you don't know, and I do. I think that you should be a little bit more responsible in knowing what it is. Number 15, The Simpsons Go to Brazil, The Simpsons. The Simpson family has traveled to various locations during the series run, such as Canada, Australia, Japan, and the UK to name a few. None of those visits stirred up as much controversy as their trip to Brazil. 
After a young boy Lisa has been sponsoring goes missing, the family decides to travel to Rio de Janeiro to find him. That poor little boy. We've got to find him. How many people live in Brazil? 156 million. No. Well, we've got to find him. What? I'm really concerned. There was a strong negative reaction to the episode in Brazil. Many felt that Rio was portrayed in a bad light, arguing the episode showcased the city as poverty-stricken, crime-ridden, and infested with rats. What a charming neighborhood. Mom, these are slums. The government just painted them bright colors so the tourists wouldn't be offended. Works for me. Yeah, check out the rats. Ooh, they look like Skittles. The show also used inaccurate stereotypes by having characters dance the conga and speak with Spanish accents. The Simpsons would visit Brazil again, to much less fanfare. Number 14, Puerto Rican Day Parade, Seinfeld. On their way home from a Mets game, Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer find themselves stuck in some serious traffic thanks to a parade hosted by New York's Puerto Rican community. Each character tries to figure out a way to get around the parade. Kramer gets into the festivities, appearing with a Puerto Rican flag. I'm into this Puerto Rican day. The sight, the sound, the hot, spicy flavor of it all. It's caliente! <laughs> However, later when he lights up a cigar, his discarded match causes the flag to catch fire. He stomps on it to put out the flames. Understandably, many took issue with the flag burning and stomping. Hey, there's a guy burning the Puerto Rican flag! Who? Who is burning the flag? Many angry letters were sent to NBC and protests were held outside their New York offices. The scene would be edited out of broadcast reruns. Number 13, Miley Cyrus twerking, the 30th MTV Video Music Awards. The VMAs have had their share of controversial moments, and the 2013 edition of the award show was no different. Miley Cyrus gave a performance of We Can't Stop, which led straight into a duet of blurred lines by her and Robin Thicke. Cyrus was transitioning away from her Hannah Montana image, so many people were shocked to see her suggestively dance and twerk up on the older thick. In a later interview, she stated she wanted to garner more attention as a way to stand out, but the judgment she faced in the aftermath was too harsh. Number 12, The Cut to Black, The Sopranos. Series finales are tricky to pull off, if not done right, they can be a blemish on the show's overall reputation. The ending of The Sopranos is still widely debated due to its ambiguous nature. Tony, along with AJ and Carmela, are at a diner waiting for Meadow to arrive. Oh, I went ahead and ordered some for the tape. Don't stop the scene is tense with a number of other characters entering the establishment along with quick edits, all set to Don't Stop Believin'. The final shot is of Tony looking up, with the screen cutting to black. Initially, many people thought their feed had cut out due to the abrupt ending. Fans of the show were upset that there was no definitive answer to Tony's fate. Number 11, Sinead O'Connor tears up the Pope, Saturday Night Live. Sinead O'Connor was an already outspoken artist before her appearance on Saturday Night Live in 1992. Her first performance of the evening was well-received, but it was her second that would really shake things up. She performed an a cappella cover of Bob Marley's War, while singing the last verse, she held up a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up before tossing it at the camera. Fight the real enemy! The studio was stunned into silence. O'Connor received a lot of backlash for the act, which she did to protest the Catholic Church and its role in covering up harm caused by its priests, which many Americans were not aware of at the time. We knew in Ireland 10 years before anyone in America or Canada knew, so I understand that at the time I made that gesture, it was an abhorrent idea in America to suggest it. Number 10, Putin's Holster, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert managed to do something quite unlikely. He pissed off Trump supporters and the LGBTQ plus community with the same joke. When responding to President Trump's treatment of CBS journalist John Dickerson, The Late Show host went on a rant that culminated in a punchline implying Trump was only useful at performing oral copulation on Russian President Vladimir Putin. The only thing your mouth is good for is being Vladimir Putin's holster. 
Colbert later apologized to the LGBTQ plus community for his choice of words, but made it clear he did not feel bad about offending the president, whose supporters had called for his cancellation, and rejoiced in Trump personally criticizing him for the joke. The president of the United States has personally come after me and my show. And there's only one thing to say. <laughs> Number 9. Wardrobe Malfunction – Super Bowl 38 Halftime Show In 2004, Justin Timberlake was a surprise guest closing off the MTV-produced Super Bowl halftime show starring Janet Jackson. At the end of their duet, to drive home the song's sexually charged lyrics, JT ripped at Jackson's top. That much was clearly planned. What wasn't planned was that he accidentally exposed her right nipple in the process. Timberlake and Jackson insisted it was an accident or wardrobe malfunction, while others speculate it must have been an intentional publicity stunt. I was just kind of like, I was sort of dumbfounded at how crucified the whole thing was. Following the incident, the FCC cracked down on TV and tried unsuccessfully to fine CBS, who aired the game, $550,000. Number 8. Hannah's End – 13 Reasons Why This popular Netflix series is controversial overall due to its primary subject matter of a teen taking their own life, which some experts accuse the show of glorifying. Others argue that it doesn't do enough to show why main character Hannah's decision to take her own life is wrong and warn teens who have dealt with similar issues against watching the series. On top of that, the scene where Hannah actually ends her life is particularly graphic, followed by her mother finding her body. Number 7. Demon from the Shadows – American Horror Story American Horror Story isn't a tame show by any standard, but one scene at the beginning of their 2015-2016 hotel season stands out as particularly gruesome. Gabriel gets high in a seedy hotel room, and a strange creature with no discernible facial features emerges from the shadows and advances on him. This is not implied, either. It's shown on screen in graphic detail. While it may seem to have been done for shock value alone, the show's creator insists it was meant to depict how substance dependency feels. Number 6. Inappropriate Family Relationships – The X-Files it's an episode centered on a family of murderers, a family where one of the three brothers is father to the other two. Also, their limbless mother is stored under a bed until she's pulled out for sex. And when the inevitable happens and is carried to term, the clan buries the offspring. And, believe it or not, this storyline aired on a major US network in prime time. Well, once anyway, before it was banned for several years. This is by far the most gruesome and disturbing X-Files episode. The Peacock family hasn't shown up since on the program, and probably won't ever again. Number 5. Ramsay and Sansa's Wedding Night – Game of Thrones Beheadings, murder, and even sexual violence are all par for the course in this series. There is one scene, however, that had many longtime fans saying the show had gone too far. In a Season 5 episode, Ramsay Bolton takes an unwilling Sansa Stark on their wedding night and makes Theon Greyjoy watch. While it wasn't as graphic as it could have been, many found it gratuitous and unnecessary, given that the scene did not happen in the books. It even prompted one site to stop covering the series entirely. Sansa did get her revenge on Ramsay the following season, but for many, the damage had already been done. Number 4. Maud's Abortion – Maud as a spin-off of All in the Family, one of the most controversial shows of its day, it's no surprise that Maud also took on some very sensitive subject matter. But while All in the Family's Archie Bunker was controversial for his racism and homophobia, Maud turned heads due to her feminism and outspoken liberal values. One episode that caused quite a stir was the two-parter Maud's Dilemma, wherein Maud discovers she's pregnant and, after much deliberation, decides to have an abortion. When you were young, abortion was a dirty word. It's not anymore. Now you think about that. The episode's original airing caused nearly 7,000 protest letters and even got the attention of the United States Catholic Conference. Number 3. Censoring Muhammad – South Park Always ones to poke the bear. South Park produced two episodes primarily dealing with censoring the image of the Prophet Muhammad due to threats of violence from extremists. Okay, what if we cover his face with a paper bag? 
No, because you'd still be showing him a walk around. That could be the trouble. In a possibly ironic twist, Trey Parker and Matt Stone received real threats of violence. And in response, Comedy Central decided to censor the second episode's visual depiction of Muhammad. While many thought this was part of the joke, seeing as how Parker and Stone had their Muhammad wear a bear costume in the first episode, it wasn't. Comedy Central's censorship of an episode about censorship did help drive Parker and Stone's point home, though. If you don't want to be made fun of anymore, all you need are guns and bombs to get people to stop. Number two, Ellen's coming out. Ellen. Ellen, are you coming out or not? <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres' sexual orientation is common knowledge today. But in the 90s, a major American sitcom having an openly gay lead actor, let alone lead character, was a rarity to say the least. That was until DeGeneres came out publicly in real life, with her character Ellen Morgan following suit. Susan, I'm gay. <laughs> While the highly publicized coming out episode was a ratings winner, the show was canceled a year later. Some argue due to the controversy the episode created. Ellen celebrated the 20th anniversary of her coming out on her talk show with guests Oprah Winfrey and Laura Dern, who were both part of the original episode. Why? Well, because you don't have to fight for anyone to embrace you and say how wonderful you have a family and children. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bill Says a Racial Slur – Real Time with Bill Maher Bill Maher is no stranger to controversy, and when he's under fire, he typically doubles down and never apologizes. That was until he made an off-the-cuff joke during an interview with U.S. Senator Ben Sass when he used the slur. We'd love to have you work in the fields with us. <laughs> work in the fields? That's part of that. That's... <laughs> Senator. HBO yanked the clip, and Marr issued an apology the next day. But the outcry and calls for Marr's cancellation continued. In his following episode, Marr was joined by guests Ice Cube and Simone Sanders, who not only explained to him exactly why what he said was a huge problem, but also that this was a teachable moment. And so for a lot of people in America, that was like a slap in the face to black America, particularly to black women. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.